In my introduction, I was just outline, outlining how difficult it has become for the digital universe. But you've always stayed away from venture capital funding and private equity funding uh, much before the difficult times arrived. Uh, why is it? I mean, was it an article of faith for you that you will build your company up from scratch without recourse to external capital? What made you stay away? Yeah, so our uh, 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 this from you know, early days, 25 years, 27 years now, uh, I wanted to avoid venture capital because I wanted to build a company for the long haul with uh, uh, really a you know, focus on our freedom to to be ourselves, really. That was the reason. There wasn't any very deep reason, but I felt that if we took venture capital, we would have to provide an exit eventually, which would have to be either an acquisition, in which case we lose our independence, or go public, in which ways again we would lose our independence or freedom. So of execution. So I felt that being private would uh, give us the freedom. And, and what do I mean by the freedom? Freedom to invest in very long term R and D. A lot of the things we do are focused on the long term. And for example, there are products that invest. We invested uh, 12, 13 years ago, which are paying off now. Which is very difficult to do when you have venture capital uh, or, or even public markets down your neck because quarter to quarter profitability become very important so that's why we uh, decided to, to essentially stay private indefinitely which can only be possible if we don't raise external money now I, I take your point and it's a very important point that you make but was it also in a way to do with the fact that you foresaw that reliance on external capital might actually warp the business model of your company in a way that will not that you'll not be able to focus on profitability on an annual basis to drive the company forward, which is what a lot of digital companies seem to be trapped in today. Did you foresee that problem too? Yeah, it was clear, you know, even in 99, 2000, there was a dot-com bubble, which was, uh, you know, a lot of companies that raised huge rounds of money then, those are not huge rounds now, uh, then fell by the wayside in 2001, 2, and then there was a big drought in VC funding for a while. That was a, a good lesson watching this in real time then. And uh, it also emphasized that you, you know, you, if you first, you know, the, if you raise money, you're forced to spend it and you lose profitability. And then when you really, uh, you know, when the winter arrives, money is no longer available and you're losing money. And uh, so we decided, you know, we will uh, do it profitably. And that necessarily meant growth would be slower. But it's steadier, and we have actually grown steadily over the last 25 years now. We've crossed a billion dollar in uh, revenue, and we are now accelerating. The uh, reason for the acceleration is now we have the depth and breadth of product portfolio, which we could not have built up if we had raised money, because that long-term investment was not possible. And so you are, you know, in a, in a sense, uh, what venture capital forces it to grow faster by investing more heavily in sales and marketing as opposed to R&D. And sales and marketing will give you an immediate boost uh, in growth. But if you don't invest enough in R&D, you don't have long-term growth. So that's the trade-off we were able to make, long-term growth versus uh, more immediate growth. If you like the video, do like, comment, share, and subscribe.